All right. Uh, I'm going to skip past the previously on. Hey, isn't it weird how a show that was dropped all at once has a previously on? Yep. <laughs> Man, I, I can't explain it. One thing I will say is I'm kind of disappointed there isn't, like, an opening credit sequence that a lot of shows have, because as shit as the rest of the show is, they could have done, like, a really neat intro sequence. Like, you know, if Game of Thrones has their intro sequence or um, yeah. X-Files or whatever else, where they just do this really, like, memorable and cool intro, I feel like they could have done something like that here and we just don't get it. <laughs> You know what they would have done? They would have just done something with sand. Oh, God. Like, come on. No, <laughs> it would have been another have, uh, sand intro. They would have tried to recreate the Fallout 3 intro, I guarantee it. Oh. All along with the song and everything. Yeah, blaring. maybe. Okay. How long after the actual episode starts do you think it'll be until we hear an oldies? Oh, my God. Immediately. Uh, I'm going to say it It opens with one. I'll, I'll... Yeah. I'll say that. <laughs> so we're all voting the same way, then. Mm. <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> Fucking knew it. Fucking, Fucking god damn it. They have to. They just can't fucking... No restraint. Yep. And, and it's every single song from the games, too. They're not picking anything new as far as i could tell it's all the same shit we've heard a thousand times from the games mm -hmm. but not even like the the more interesting songs from the games like we're not getting like the necropolis song or anything like that well, that's, we're that's just getting that's not even a song though it's like an actual soundtrack piece we actually talked about this in episode two that we don't uh -huh. get any of that really good ambient music it's actually yeah. um an edit i did in the episode two video is when lucy's walking around the desert for the first time and it's playing that oldies track. I edited okay. in uh, Desert Winds from Fallout 1 uh, to clips of her. I had to cut it up so it didn't get hit for copyright, the um, the video, the visual. But I did that, and, like, yeah, it's immediately better. Yeah. It would be, because, again, a lot of this stuff just feels like nostalgia baiting. It's like the um super mario brothers movie where they just constantly did all kinds of old music oh God. even if it didn't fit like when they did thunderstruck and oh. um yeah it, it, in, a, in a race track for donkey kong it was weird yeah and the uh songs never fit either that's something else we talked about was like they have all these oldie songs from the games and they put them over literally just random scenes and yeah. they're not even fitting most of the time like there's nothing in the song to correlate with what's currently happening most of the time and it just feels random and it's like i feel like you if you dug deep enough you could probably find some oldies from the games that could actually fit certain scenes where it's like oh yeah that actually kind of makes sense to be here but they don't do that it's literally just random yeah, I brought up Butcher Pete before uh, in these uh, videos, in these recordings we're doing. And I, I still wouldn't have liked it, but imagine if they played that in episode one during the uh, vault combat scene instead of the whatever random song they played there. I, like, it, it would still feel a bit out of place, but at least it would be better than just random track number seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Um, and even, like... <sighs> Again, would be out of place, but imagine if uh, we'd been introduced to the ghoul with the song Big Iron instead. To kind of emphasize, like, him being the outlaw in, in yeah. the, the song. No, we can't have that. That's a New Vegas song. We can't do that. Oh, yeah, that's um, right. New Vegas allowed. That's yeah. right. Fuck New Vegas. Worst game in the franchise. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I really hope they retcon it with this series. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, didn't they? Um, man, the, the amount of cope I've heard about that too. Of like, oh, the chalkboard, but it shows the line going the other way. Again, we haven't seen it yet. But we'll get to it. Yeah, we, we've already been told because everybody's been like, dude, that's fucked. Because that's that's a, what a couple years before New Vegas even takes place, and Shady Sands supposed to be new. It's like that's that's fucked. Yeah, it yep. is. When nature's given. The most fucked up thing about this is it's actually making me want to play Fallout 3 again. 
<laughs> you must resist. <laughs> I mean, it'd be better than this. I, I do genuinely really like the song, though. Like, that's probably half oh. the reason I ever get the urge to play Fallout 3 anymore. Is it just brain off, radio on, shoot. Yeah. It yeah. feels like the only way you can enjoy that game. I mean, that's kind of why these are gold oldies, right? I mean, because they're good songs. Yeah. Wait, what? Why are you going in to investigate? I bet it's gonna be a funeral. Yeah, it doesn't like why do why does this ghoul care at this moment? Like I, I thought you yeah. just wanted to take her away. Why are you going to investigate the sounds? Cause it's a Fallout game. We have to get sidetracked by bullshit. He said the funny line in the last episode. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Thou shalt be sidetracked by bullshit. It's like, oh my god. Yeah, that it's one of those references that's so on the nose where it's just like, no, don't, please, God. <laughs> you know, it's hard out here. You're turning. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Hey, you, you don't have to have any vials, do you? Just one little puff, and I'll be back on my feet. You don't look for it. I'm sorry, Roger. I'm all out. It's okay. You know, I was giving it an old ponder as the scene was playing on about how I feel about this. I I don't think I like this portrayal for someone turning into a ghoul where it's like it, it's you know how in movies when someone's like turning into a werewolf, it's a process they're trying to resist, but they can't, and they just go all snarly and become the monster? It almost yeah. kind of seems like that, but it's a lot more drawn out here. Whereas I feel like someone actually becoming a feral would be more like a situation with dementia, where you just slowly lose yourself over time. Yeah, yeah uh, I was... I was gonna... go That's what I was more thinking of. Like, I don't recall like feral being like a sickness like it's presented here like you have to keep it at bay at all times i've always associated it with like it was based on the individual and if you had a somebody who was weak-willed that turned into a ghoul their mind could break just naturally and they just go insane like they're not it's not a disease or a sickness yeah because that's one of the things i liked about the games at least as far as i know They've never explained what the difference is between someone going feral or not. It's always been a vague thing. And yeah. to me, it just always seemed based purely on luck. Like you were lucky enough to retain your mind or you were unlucky enough to become a mindless creature that just is bound to wander until they die. I could see it in the like in the games, um, the old games, the ghoulification process where if you were somebody that was unlucky and maybe it damaged your nerves. And so you were in constant pain, like at all hours of the day, forever and ever. And you also look like a walking, shambling corpse, like your mind would could literally no longer handle it. And you just like literally just fucking go insane from it as opposed to. Uh, again, I, I don't really like the, the the luck of the draw thing in regards of a full thing, but if the luck of the draw is like, hey, in the ghoulification process, your nerve endings got fucked. So you're experiencing agony forever. I I could understand somebody losing their mind and turning into like a wild beast that just attacks anything that's moving near them. Yeah, I understand that. But for me, it's just I prefer the implied luck of the draw just for the sake of, I think it's one of those things that shouldn't be explained. It should be perpetually left vague. It's I like explaining it was, the force. It's a bad idea. I always figured it was like, 
because because we do see examples of like regular ghouls turning into ferals. It's rare, but we do have instances of it in the games. And I just figured it would because it, it almost every time you see that, it's in like high radiation areas where they've just been like staying there. I always just figured it was like overexposure to radiation like damages their brain and they basically get the equivalent of like dementia, like you said, or rabies. And it would it wouldn't be like this. It would be more like actual insanity where you're just like pacing around and like bumping into walls and yeah basically going crazy not not just going not just sitting in the middle of the floor going like, like that fucking dude from the <laughs> from the meme <laughs> they came bound in over <laughs> what? <laughs> i tried to show it to you and you said no it's too cringe i don't want to watch it oh <laughs> Not as long as you, though. <laughs> you felt last to us. So the only long. thing I like so far, I don't really like the weird fucking growling shit, but I do like the weird voice modulation, kind of like what Jason Bright from New Vegas has. See, I figured that was a trait unique to him as a glowing one. In, in, <sighs> yeah, in, true. In a version of the show, I would like to see a glowing one show up, either like a sane one. Or a feral one. It doesn't matter. I, I would like to see a glowing one in a good version of the show. Ooh, that yeah. would actually be way better if, like, it like whenever we see a glowing one, it has that like weird voice modulation. Yeah. But all the other ghouls sound normal or like just like really raspy voices like they normally do in the games. Oh, that'd be way. Oh, yeah, that'd be good. Especially if like characters are exploring a building and they hear like ghoul sounds, and then they. They're listening, and then you hear the modulated one, and one of the characters just gives, like, an intense look at the others, like, oh, shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Say, remember how good food used to taste? <sighs> Lamb co mac and cheese. Ice cream and apple pie. <laughs> ah, damn! Apple pie! <laughs> You know, my mom used to... Yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't blame him at all. Yeah, no. I, I'd, I'd rather that than turning feral. Yeah. Yeah. And again, he, he did it to put his mind uh, at ease first, so he wasn't anticipating it. He, you know, there's no flinch, reaction, nothing like that. Just done, dusted, mercy kill, it's over. Yeah, I, I actually do really like that. It's <laughs> it, In any other show, it should just be like a decent moment, but it's risen to become my favorite moment instantly of this entire show. <laughs> Think well, of the, the rabbits. <laughs> Think of the rabbits. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, that's, the, that's the funniest part in the show. Like, I don't like any of the main cast of characters, and the only character I've, I've ever, like, thus far... That I've uh, found was like, yeah, you know, I I could be more interested in seeing him on screen more would be Thaddeus. Yeah, the <laughs> uh, Squire dude helping uh, Maximus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh my God! I just realized. So, wait a minute. It, does Maximus need to brand Thaddeus now? Oh God! <laughs> does he have to do it in the field? Why did they introduce that? Like, what? Uh, how, when has that ever been a part of the Brotherhood? What the fuck is this? Yeah. I don't. Again, Bethesda has no idea. Well, Bethesda's never known what Fallout is, but they have no idea what the Brotherhood of Steel is, especially. So they just reinvent them every single time they appear. Yeah. And, and this is exactly what I said in my Fallout 4 analysis. How the fuck are you supposed to know what the Brotherhood is supposed to be when they're different every time you see them? And I can't remember if I mentioned this to Pagan on... No, it wasn't the last recording. It's something I thought about the past couple days at work. Where... We, we have an actual slippery slope case with the Brotherhood. Where, you know, they're good guy saviors in Fallout 3. And the primary defense seems to be... Well, it's just one chapter of the Brotherhood in this one location. This one time that decided to do it, okay? It's fine. It's not the entire Brotherhood that's changed. And now here yeah. we are. Fallout 4 has come and gone. New Vegas is... Or sorry. What do I mean, New Vegas? Um, 
76 has come and gone, and now we're at the show, and the Brotherhood literally, literally preach about, like, bringing order to the wasteland. Yeah, which is something they've never given a shit about. Yeah. It ain't all canned peaches and marmalade left up here, sweetheart. Sometimes, a fella's gotta eat a fire. Mm. Mm. Oh. Mm. Uh, what? what? Wait, excuse uh, me? Yeah, what the fuck? Uh, I wasn't expecting yeah. cannibalism, Jesus. Yeah, you, like, Bethesda. I mean, you don't know, but ghouls, like, like normal foods and stuff, too. Okay? They yeah, don't they're not have zombies. Corp I was about, I was gonna bring that up. <laughs> Because he said, remember how good, like, regular food used to taste? And I was like, what the fuck do you eat then? Well, I, I just assumed that, like, maybe in the ghoulification process, they lost their sense of taste. You know, maybe the food tastes, like, awkward and weird now. Or Bethesda logic, they just don't eat. They just don't have to eat at all. But then, oh God. <laughs> if that's the case, why the fuck would they need to resort to cannibalism? Yeah, and also, why did he take a tooth? I don't know. Like, if he's, sell. if he's then gonna cut, uh, he's. But if he's gonna he's sell, why not take all the teeth? Uh, yeah, I don't know why he wouldn't just take all of them. But we we literally saw in the last episode that there's literally just a shop where you can sell your teeth, and Maximus did it. Mm, fair. It it is just really weird that you'd only take a single one and then start cutting into the back and then. Engage in cannibalism? That's weird. Yeah, I don't get the cannibalism thing because if they can, if they need to eat, then there's no reason that they shouldn't be able to eat regular food. Yeah. If they don't need to eat, why then he doesn't need to cannibalize? Yeah, why cannibalize? There's, it's just there's no logic to this. Yeah, and especially like, I, I don't know. He's like weirdly into it. As well, and yeah, it also kind yeah. of recontextualized the scene. I thought he was doing a nice mercy killing. No, as it turns out, he's he was hungry. Yeah, that favorite moment of uh, the series so far just lost so many points. Yeah, they just anytime there's a like even a remotely decent scene in this show, they completely fuck it up like immediately as soon as the scene is over. Well, hey, at least they never miss an opportunity to miss an opportunity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, my God, that was actually a decent scene, and you completely fucked it up. Like, what is this? <laughs> Why the fuck am I doing all the work? Now, come on, Vaulty. Ass jerky don't make itself. Wh wait. Ass jerky, really? What the fuck well is this dialogue? Arthur, are you actually going to untie her or let her have a weapon to potentially attack you with yeah that too i'm i'm still stuck on ash jerky because what the fuck is this borderlands tier writing i mean it's it, it's just so fucking like disturbing especially this whole thing of like no i bet your daddy had a stroll up his neighbor's ass and stuff like that and like what the fuck like oh god She's going to make him a nipple salad. No! <laughs> no, not with the yodeling fuck off. <laughs> I've already Dude, seen pe other people compare it to the Wonder Woman yodeling from Snyder Cut. Yeah, it's so... <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> cut him! Cut him right now! Slit, slit his throat. Just jugular. Well, she can't because he's immune to damage. We've seen him take bullets. Yeah, I was gonna bring that up. I was about him. to say. <laughs> uh, he, he literally can't fucking die. Which is, again, it, it, so is it just unique to him that he can't die? Because obviously they can fucking die. We are currently witnessing an example on our screen at this very moment. Okay, but he but, gave him yeah, a headshot. But... I wonder if they're playing with literal zombie rules mm -hmm. of you need to shoot him uh -huh. in the head. That's what I was going to say. I was going to say the, they're doing the Fallout 3 thing of, well, you got to kill a zombie by shooting him in the head. What, what if... The thing 
about that in Fallout 3, though, is they even lampshade that you don't actually have to do it. It's just a fucking myth or a rumor. I know. And it's so fucked up that they're they, they're getting their own lore wrong. Assuming well, that's what this is. I mean, you've seen a mill try to make Nate a war criminal in a, you know... <laughs> commit a war crime two years after he was out of the military and was a civilian now. So I like how, you know. I like how he thought by just adding the, not the one with the gun means he's not complicit in a war crime. Even <laughs> Is that how it works? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hands, Again, hands the weapon to the uh, killer and laughs about it as the unarmed prisoner, the unarmed restrained prisoner is shot in the head and killed. And then the corpse shot again to make it twitch. Yeah. It even better. It's it's again. It's a concept of the the hand of one is the hand of all. So, if you are at a bank robbery, but you're the getaway driver, and yeah. one of the bank robbers shoots somebody and kills somebody, you're still charged for murder, even though you were the getaway driver, because you were complicit in the criminal conspiracy. Same thing for war crimes. Oh, fuck off. Hello, ladies. How are you? Part of me oh genuinely... Oh, my God. <laughs> Golden oldies. Part of me genuinely wonders if Bethesda had very little oversight with this at all, and it's literally just people who barely played, like, Fallout 3, and they only have, like, vague memories of it. So they're just implementing things that they think would work, even though they directly go against, like, Bethesda's own writing. I mean, we do know by Bethesda's own admission that effort is a dirty word. So it wouldn't mm -hmm. surprise me if they just phoned it in and they would get sent and like, hey, we need this for approval. And they said, yep, looks good. And they didn't even bother like checking anything. Yeah. Because it really does feel like they got as far as like, oh, well, we made it to the, you know, to Underworld and Oh, we, we heard uh, the that Crowley guy say something about shooting zombies in the head, and yeah, th that's a good idea. We'll do that in the show and make it so that ghouls can only be killed with headshots, even though the game literally was making, like, mocking that, where it was sort of seen as like a, like a slur almost, where it's like, oh yeah, you gotta kill a zombie by shooting him in the head and, you know, shit like that, which Crowley despises. He he gets angry about that kind of stuff because it's obviously not true and it's just a way of, like, uh, dehumanizing ghouls. Yeah. But the, the fucking people who made this show literally just took, like, one line and are like, yeah, that's a good idea, let's do that, because they just have, like, no idea. 200 years with no contact. The terrible things this creature must have been through. Oh my god, hang on, wait, wait, wait. You're calling him a creature and, like, looking down on him so horrifically. They're, they're literally talking about him as if he's, he, he's a dog. Like, literally just an animal in here. In, like, 200 years without contact. It's like... He clearly had contact with their people. He can clearly talk and socialize with the people. He can follow orders. How do you think they set up this whole, like, ambush within the vault that actually doesn't make any sense? Because how the hell did they get in the vault anyways? Because your vault has the door? So, it, I... It's still very unclear what the layout of these vaults are, and it's really annoying for trying to understand what the hell is happening this early on. We should know yeah. what the exact setup is, so we have a point of understanding of how they even got here but it's a thing mentioned in the previous episode and it's so fucking dumb of oh we we're trying to uh talk to them and one of them showed me their butthole and i think that's a sign they want to communicate you already know they fucking speak english you dumb fuck yeah i they again they're they're acting like as if they came in and were going like ooh, 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 ooh. yeah <laughs> And it's like, no, that's not what happened. They were clearly talking. They were clearly communicating. They followed orders. Like, holy shit. They thought they were vault dwellers until they attacked them. Yeah. yeah. I was there the first time that you tried rhubarb pie and ice cream. 
I am so exceedingly uninterested in the story of what's going on in the fucking vault. Yeah, like, I get that they're trying to set up this whole, like, conspiracy and the backstabbing council members and things like that. It's just... I don't fucking... The real, the real questions are all out there, and especially since the stuff we're getting in the vault is stupid things like rehabilitate the prisoners that are clearly intelligent and tried to murder everybody and raped a couple of people. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Like, at this point, it just feels like it's wasting time. Maybe it'll build up to something, but... I don't know, man. Yeah, it feels like padding. Like, they were trying to get another episode out of season one, basically. So they needed to extend the run time on everything. Yeah. During the raid, I got into storage space and I hid. Does that make you angry? Why does it matter? Regular boys can get angry and they'll just pee on the wall. And clever boys like you are angry. <laughs> You're lucky not to have seen where that can lead. Just tread lightly. That's all I ask. Is God, that supposed so to be a threat? They... There's so much more they could have done with that scene, too. Like, she doesn't sound wise or interesting. Her thing of, like, you know, when clever boys get angry. Blah, it's like, no, you, again, you could have turned this into something. He's, his whole career is that he lacks motivation in every single thing he does. And now he confessed to you that he hid during the raid while everybody was being massacred. He hid. When you asked, did that make him angry? You should have said, well, why don't you use that fire to change yourself? Yeah. Just use that fire to do something. Instead of being the one who hid, what if you're the one that could have protected those people? What if you decide to join the security force instead? What if you become the head of security for this vault? What if you start going on that path? You channel that anger into something productive. And that would be a useful move on her part, too, because, like, he would... Well, they all have to answer to the Overseer, but if yeah. she can work it, so, like... I'm trying to figure out how to word it, but you know what I mean, that he answers to her. Yeah, basically, she'll she'll have the inside road to the Overseer's office. Yeah. And, and again, this is a great way to go about it. The other two are more interested in their, like really petty, snide remarks to each other. Like, the, the really passive-aggressive, oh, I liked your poster. Oh, I was just admiring yours as well. And it's like, oh, God, you two are, like, so fucking fake, it hurts. <laughs> and this is, like, this is the manipulative schemer type, is what I get from her. But it doesn't feel like they're actually playing her that way. Like, they're, they're trying yeah. to do it that way, but it's not working. It, yeah, it's cause, like cause in this scene right here is like a perfect example of why it didn't work. Her like, oh, you're just glad you don't see what happens when clever boys get angry. It's like, oh, gee. Yeah, it's like discount bargain bin Chinese knockoff Littlefinger. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's a pretty good way to put it. Wait, why did this? Why did the Geiger counter stop? What are you? I don't know. I figured they probably Jeez. stopped it because <laughs> it would be annoying to the viewer if they kept it playing. But I thought I was actually thinking how interesting it would be if just throughout each episode the constant soundtrack is a like not ticking super fast, but a Geiger counter ticking in the background. You know, it's just very subtle. Yeah. Yeah, and then it only get, picks up when you get near super irradiated places. Yeah, and what what the amusing thing is because the Geiger counter stopped, it's like as if she swallowed the radioactive bits. Now the water's totally fine. <laughs> oh, I'm you, sweetie. You 
just give it a little time. Oh, we're we're very much the same, you and I. <laughs> I always hate those kind of speeches. I don't mind the villain. We're not so different, you and I. If it actually makes sense, if it actually fits the characters, it yeah. does. It... I guess that's why I hate the speech so much. Is because, like, eighty percent of the time, it has no bearing or relevance. It's yeah, like, it's just ah, yes, you killed my henchman to get revenge for the family that I raped and massacred. <laughs> we are not so different. It's like um, that's wildly different. What are you talking? Yeah. I guess I, I still don't really want to draw the comparison here, but I guess it kind of makes sense because he was a normal pre-war guy. We already saw he had a family life. He seemed like a decent, normal person, and now he's this brutal fucking killer. And the same mm -hmm. thing can easily happen to her if she's out in the wasteland long enough. Um, uh, scientist man Winzig or whatever his name is, he pretty much said yeah. the same thing in episode two. <sighs> the speech could have been more interesting if he explained that I, I was a lot like you way back when. It was yeah. long before the bombs fell, when society still existed, when the rule of law and decency still existed. I didn't turn into this overnight, honey. Yeah. This was a long and painful road. That's a much better speech. Yeah. Oh boy. Well, don't stop, you dumb bitch. <laughs> what? some cartoon logic so you had to look down at the rope before you pulled it like huh oh, oh i have now acknowledged the rope feel free to tug <laughs> there you are you little killer no oh my god Right there is the closest thing we've had to an honest exchange so far. What? No, it's not. She's in panic trying to get away from a psychopath. <laughs> the fact she bit your finger was like, yeah, that's the most normal, sane thing to do in this situation, honestly. Also, why was he grabbing at her face and putting his finger in her mouth? <laughs> because, Cree. He is moving at the speed of the script. And the script said at this point, he must try to finger her luscious lips. What? Uh, I don't like the line, there you are, you little killer. Because th that's one that was played in a trailer. And yeah. the way they played it in the trailer, it seemed like, you know, he had caught up to her after a time of being away. And, you know, maybe she had killed someone along the way. It's <laughs> like, okay. Maybe there's something interesting there, but no, he's just saying it to her because she got she she bit his finger. She got a little violent with him. Yeah, she's she's inflicted a self defense wound on him, which I, I don't know. Also, shocking lack of vocal reaction to her getting her finger cut off. Yeah, and then it like immediately stops. Like, it, not not when it's fully off, but, like, when it's when he's halfway cutting through. It's like, I'm sorry, honey, the pain hasn't stopped. Like, I'm surprised she wasn't, like, whimpering or, like, foaming at the mouth. Well, it's not foaming, but, you know, that, that sensation when you go, like... Well, she doesn't even really scream, even. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait for them to show, like, her using a stim pack and her fucking finger just regrows. <laughs> To yeah no they'll you know what they'll probably do something stupid and it'll be a doctor's bag just oh, be like ah oh, see see we know about the doctor's bags and it'll be like they don't regrow limbs 
No, no, no. It'll be it'll be another one of those stupid leg things, but it's just a finger and it's just like I got the little grinder and it just onto our fucking finger. <laughs> I hate that thing so much. I, yeah, what the fuck so was dumb. that, dude? It's so stupid. <laughs> I, I was uh, like, had to see that again editing episode two just before watching this, and I it's still my my brain shorted out again seeing that thing because who the fuck would ever actually think that's a good idea? Yeah, all and, it uh, does is tear your fucking leg apart. It it didn't it, stop the bleeding. It didn't do it didn't do anything. Plus, it's all solid metal. Even like the the grinding stuff inside of it would add weight that thing would be so heavy you'd barely be able to lift it yeah after and, you you know have exsanguinated a lot of fucking blood yeah and you're just and here's like the, near death here's the other frustrating thing about it too even for bethesda's crazy wacky all corporations are evil cartoon world even then, this thing doesn't even fit in. That's how fucked it is. That's how out of place it is in this world. Yep. Is even with the cartoon clown show, but those has turned it into it's out of place. That was because um... we're supposed to believe some company pre-war was just like, oh yes, let's let's put a fucking meat and bone grinder onto the end of a thing, so it's a field prosthetic that you could just put on if you get your foot blown off. Like what the fuck? Yeah. I was uh, talking to Creed last night, Pagan, and I was like, I, in Bethesda's Fallout universe, with how much they've destroyed the canon of Fallout, because they don't know what it is, um, I can't believe that pre-war America could do anything. Yeah. They seem like the most incompetent, like, idiocracy nonsense of all time, based off of everything in Fallout's universe yeah, and how they've totally retconned like the USA because the USA in in Fallout universe of Bethesda's making is not competent in the slightest yeah they're just and, cartoonishly stupid yeah and they overuse the evil corporation that hates everyone and only cares about money joke where it's like oh yes we're gonna we're gonna remove safety features from our building so our employees can die horribly because they'll save us 53 cents they just do that joke uh, uh, ad nauseum in every game now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it it just it's so weird because like this is in the Fallout universe, pre-war America took Canada. All right, pre-war America was a genuine threat and was very competent. But now in Fallout's version, pre-war America is like Homer fucking Simpson. <laughs> I still can't get over the foot thing, man. I, I fucking hate that thing. It's so stupid. Like, in the amount of time it takes them to find the box, put the thing on, and get out the door, they could have carterized his wound, bandaged it, and got him some crutches, and he probably would have survived. <laughs> It's just so weird. Like the foot thing is already stupid, but it's also weird how like quickly they killed off this character. He was, like it feels like he died quickly, like really quick. Like I don't even know what the point of the foot thing was if they were just going to kill him like 2 minutes later. And the unfortunate it's just to be shocking. The unfortunate thing is he's probably like the most interesting character so far too. Mhm. Mm Aside yeah. from maybe um Squire Thaddeus, who we didn't even meet at that point. Well, we saw him, we didn't know anything about him, because he only showed up, like, to the side. We didn't get any character from him. Yeah, he, he was just in the group of bullies, the people hazing him. Yeah. It's insane how depressed this man is that he can't get that fucking cousin pussy anymore. I know. He's so lost now. And like, <laughs> he has become so apathetic because his his cousin is not there to give him some head. I, I still can't believe that's a the thing they actually put in the show. Just like, casually, like, what the fuck? Yeah. 
And, also and because... how, like, she was like, oh, the cousin's doing it is totally fine and acceptable. And it's like, it's weird. Yeah. But also he's upset because he doesn't get to push a button three times a year anymore. <laughs> I can't believe oh, that was uh, his fucking job. We we talked about that um, last night as well of, like, when they say triannually, do they mean three times a year or do they mean every three years? Because if it was the, to give them the steel man that they wouldn't realize that none of those people were vault dwellers and they wouldn't know what was going on in the other vault, it'd be every three years, right? Like you'd have to give that big of a gap for them to allow them to forget like what everybody looks like in the other vaults that are directly connected in a one minute walk from your vault. Yeah, if you have these marriage ceremonies three times a year, every year, where everyone from the other vault comes into your vault to have dinner and have this wedding reception, I don't know how you wouldn't know, like, who the other people in the other vaults are. Even if we yeah. do go with this insane thing that the three vaults just stay to themselves and don't interact with each other besides these, the triannual swap. You know? Yeah. yeah, that does make more sense. Jesus, that makes his job even more fucking useless. <laughs> <laughs> Good God. Like I said, then that's, that's what we're just steel manning it. To give them the most benefit of the doubt physically possible. Um, and even in that, like, Will Sig, like, kind of fucks this all up. Because, again, it's Bethesda and the writers of the show not understanding how farming works because apparently all vault 33 makes is corn because like what do you... okay you don't do monocrops you have crop rotation for a good fucking reason yeah <laughs> that's one of the best vlc crusts hey i thought i'd yes. just stop by and see how you're doing not great to be honest First, I lost Lucy, and oh my god, I lost my job as the gatekeeper. Right. He he lost the two things that matter to him: pushing that a button three his times. Entire... <laughs> yeah, it's the two things that define his entire life: pushing a button three times a year and cousin pussy. What the fuck, yep. man? What is this show? Yeah. Also, it's weird that she, like. It's weird because it feels like the show is trying to present her as a villain. The, this lady right here in front of us that we see. How so? Mm -hmm. Like, when when they were at the thing and everybody at the vault was like, Here, here, we don't kill, we're not animals, we will do a rehabilitation. <laughs> she stepped to the side and told him, Hey, you were right. And if your man was here, your old man, he would do the right thing too. So like that. And she was the one who freaked out and started killing the raiders back. Like, you know, it, it's like they're trying to set up that she's going to become some kind of villain. Oh, she's... I don't want to use the buzzwords, but she's going to be the buzzwords that, you know, Hollywood likes to use. And I'm just getting that vibe from it, especially because they gave her an eye patch when she got stabbed in the eye with a fork, which... Ugh. Just, yeah, I wasn't really getting that vibe from her, but I don't know. For some reason, now that you mentioned the eye patch thing in particular, she does kind of like strike me as a female governor from Walking Dead. Yes. Just randomly, even though there's plenty of other characters that wear eye patches, it's just I don't yeah, know. It was just her. It was her tone, and then the kind of ominous way she was speaking to. Uh... The son. I can't remember the son's name. I'm sorry, I, Heidi boy. I don't know your name. I don't remember his name. I don't care what it is either. He's just Lucy's menlet gimp brother. Yeah. But yeah, like I said, that's the vibe I'm getting from the way that like she was speaking to him. She was doing it in a hush-hush way, but being firm. Yeah. So again, she's just glaring at him. Like the, the kind of like, yeah, so we should do this. So yeah. I, I I feel like she's gonna be, try to set up some kind of like overthrow of the vault or something, and take control of it herself. Uh, that's just the vibe I'm getting. I have no idea if that's what they're gonna do with her. Hell, just, I don't even know if we we don't see her for the rest of the fucking season. 
Just gonna say quickly, we are 15 minutes in and we've already recorded an hour. Wow. Same. I was actually just organizing some of Bert's things and, well, I thought maybe you... Oh my god. What? <laughs> She's trying to hook up with him? No, no, no. The fucking... The, like, dichotomy of what they just said. The fucking... Oh, uh, yeah, my, my cousin pussy is gone, and I don't get to push my button anymore. So how are you handling <laughs> the death of your fucking... <laughs> your husband. <laughs> the father of your unborn baby. <laughs> uh, yeah. About the same. Yeah. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ, man. Like, read the fucking room, you pathetic loser. He can't read the room, okay? He can only read Lucy's temperature internally. Oh, God. <laughs> Jesus, fuck. He was a good man, Steph. You think so? Of course. I mean, what can you say? Well, he took great care of his shoes. You know, it was one of the few things he truly loved. Get him talking about shoe maintenance and he'd just carry on until everyone left the room. Is this a parody? I know this I... isn't the first time we've asked this, but like, this. Uh... The fact that nothing is taken seriously, everything has to be a fucking awful joke. Like, we could have yeah. a serious moment here. Like, this could actually be an interesting discussion. And instead, they're doing the fucking, oh, yeah, he, he loved his shoes. <laughs> Fuck off. It is incredibly weird, especially because like she brought his photo over as well, which is weird. Or I assume it's his photo. Otherwise, if it's a photo of Chet, I'm going to be even more weirded out. But she's like, yeah, I'm bringing all of his stuff over. Um, and it's like, do you have a conversation about the shoe and how he kept it nice and not like pull up his photo and like have a moment to talk about who he was or anything. And the, when you do talk about who he was, it's a dig at his expense. Like, Oh, he would just go on about shoes until everybody left the room. Ah! I'm struggling to describe what it comes across as to me. Cause like, obviously yeah, they're undermining this character. We didn't even get to fucking meet. Um, and treating him like a punchline. But... This... <sighs> yeah, I don't even know how to describe this exactly, aside from what you guys said already, but... It... <laughs> Honestly, it almost kind of feels like Bethesda writers trying to uh, describe the personality of their characters and realizing they've got nothing. You know what it is? It's that um, that question that people got asked. Like, describe Luke, Leia, and Han without describing yes. their personal appearance or the job they do. Go. Yeah. And then they were able to do it, and they're like, okay, describe Ray, Finn, and Poe. Well, actually, and they're this, like, oh. Actually, it was done for the prequels. It was like uh, Qui-Gon, oh, um, uh, Padme, and someone else. I don't remember who. And, like, yeah, <laughs> it, it does remind me a lot of that. Um, yeah. But, yeah, just, it, it feels like a bad parody. It feels like a bad Saturday Night Live skit. Oh, oh my Lord. God. She is. Oh, I knew where it was going. That's why I said, oh my god. It's like, no, she's trying to replace her husband with Chet. Like, she's literally trying to dress him up like a fucking doll. Well, hey, she's got no competition now. Lucy's gone. Yeah, I mean, that's true. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? He's very experienced with the female anatomy. <laughs> she's probably hoping Lucy doesn't come back or else she'll lose him again. <laughs> <laughs> I lost Bert once, and now, because you're back, I'm losing Bertius. Dude, 
Dude, what if that's like the final boss battle of the fucking season is Lucy returns and this bitch tries to kill her because she's afraid of losing this guy? Oh my god. No, <laughs> that's no, the no, true villain understand. arc. I know his deepest, darkest secret. He really, really wants that cousin Poontang. <laughs> I must stop his addiction. <laughs> Woman moment. Mm -hmm. Also, but did you notice how she was like angry, talking about uh, her, her mood flipped to like, and those monsters took him from me. Like again, I'm just getting the vibes that they're gonna make her like villainous. Yeah, I'm getting that now. Before I was gonna say like, I don't know, she seems like the most reasonable one because she was actually like. Yeah, well, we should have defended ourselves, and also, yeah, we shouldn't be trying to re rehabilitate them. Fuck them. No, I agree. But now with you. it's literally just like, yeah, no, she's fucking crazy. I, I agree, though, that she is actually the most reasonable person in the situation, including uh, like scrawny weirdo soy son <laughs> slash brother. Um, yeah, him like they're they're in the right here. Like the council is fucking psychotic. All the people in the vault are like. Yes, yes, rehabilitate them. I'll read them from my ancient literature works. That'll rehabilitate them. And it's like, oh, it's it's horrible. And like, I just get the feeling that they don't like the the writers, don't like normal people. So that's why, like, I'm getting the feeling that they're gonna make her a villain because she is the most like normal person. Now they're making her a weirdo, though. Like, yeah. This this is some strange fucking cope. I realized what the uh, little brother reminds me of. <laughs> you know no, that one that... fucking gif of like the chinless Indian guy waving at the camera and he does a little kiss the fingers thing. Yes. Oh my <laughs> God, yes. <laughs> <laughs> He really does. Oh man. Hurt. Yes. I am hurt. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god. They're fucking both crazy, Jesus. That is one wet lady. What the fuck? I haven't experienced a lady this Oh no! Her water burst during it! <laughs> what the fuck is this feels like a parody. Like, I don't know how else to say it. This feels like a fucking parody. This doesn't feel real. It's... I feel like it's a, like, scrapped Monty Python skit. Scrapped with good reason. Yes. What the fuck are we watching? <laughs> Well, she's going to the hospital to deliver her baby, Pagan. You see, when a man and a woman love each other very... I... Fuck? I can't Look. fucking even right now. Like, what the fuck? I have, I have no idea why this was a plot point and fucking all helped me. Uh, I don't know. This is starting to feel like the writers thinly, thinly veiled fetishes inserted into the show. Like we we've had what bestiality vor and now like fucking pregnancy and vor incest. Incest, yeah, fucking water sports. Uh, what what the fuck is this? I am kind of genuinely at a loss for words i, I don't <sighs> people like this shit people say this is a good <laughs> show when i know you it's... told me there's gonna be a fallout show i didn't think a scene i'd be witnessing is a pregnant woman projecting her dead husband onto fucking weirdo incest boy and then her water breaking and spraying all over the floor like graphically spraying all over the floor I didn't think I would ever see that in a follow show we didn't even get that in fucking Game of Thrones
Like, I... What is this? When I heard there's going to be a Fallout show, I thought... You know, typical Bethesda dumbness, and... People traveling the wasteland, fighting creatures. Yeah. God, the more this goes on, the more I'm just perplexed at how people are defending this and saying it's better than Halo. Like, I don't know, man. This feels pretty on par, if not worse than the Halo show. It's definitely fucking worse than the Bebop flicks. Yeah. For sure. Like, it's not even a competition. This is far worse than Bebop flicks. And people shit all over that. Yeah. Yeah. Two month supply of vials exchange one female mint condition. Near mint condition. Condition grading requires physical evaluation. Please send her in. What? Really? So if she just waited five more seconds, she would have been free. Yep. Also, I hate this thing of like, oh yeah, ghouls literally can't go a single day without this fucking weird shit or else they go feral. Yeah. And pass Pe out, apparently. People have dropped hints about what that is and someone has explained it outright and uh, it's fucked. I, I shouldn't say I fully know what it is, but enough has been said where I pretty much know what it is. Oh no. I'm worried. Oh, I thought it was Rataway at nope, first, but not it is, right it's away. not. Yeah, I know it's not Rataway. Right Let me just so I'm, give it away. Uh, um, yeah, I, I genuinely don't give a fuck. I, <laughs> such. Can I can I guess that it's going to be a form of FEV or some shit? I don't know that. That hasn't been said to me, but what it's been described okay. as is uh, similar to an item from another game, let's say. Can I say that? Like, what it is. Is it is it like Zombrex? That's exactly what's been dropped, yes. What the fuck? What? So, so what, he... So it fucking ghouls got, uh, got bees in their brain? Is that what we're talking about here? Fucking, what the fuck? Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, basically, from what I've heard, they need a medicine to, uh, not go feral. That is so yeah, I knew stupid. That. And that has never been how ghouls worked. Yep. Ever. I did see a tweet talking about like uh it's it's not Rad X and it's literally just like a like anti ghoul serum that they use as like a currency. That's the only thing I've heard about it, but yeah. How in the fuck how okay, so wait wait, if they need this Okay, this doesn't work on multiple levels. If they need this not to go insane, how did they not go insane already? And how is every ghoul not already a fucking feral? Because how many years did it take to develop this fucking serum? Yeah, I don't know. Like, ghoulification is pretty fucking quick after the bombs dropped. Like, you would know if you won the ghoul lottery or not. And then how how long would you be wandering for? Like every fucking ghoul in existence would be feral at that point then. Yeah, I genuinely don't know. I don't know if it's it could be possibly explained away by ghouls are true to the games, but once they start going feral, then they need to take the medicine constantly to uh, not go feral. But even then, that's, I still have a problem with that, because fucking, why would you ever invent this? Yeah, yeah. I have a massive problem with that. Like, yeah. who who wouldn't even know how to stop it? Like, a, a ghoul goes feral, and everyone was like, oh shit, he, you know, he turned into a bitey monster. Well, that sucks. Why would you even know that it would be a thing you could prevent? Like, with, with a drug? Yeah, like, this goes beyond even, like, a cure for cancer. Like, <laughs> it's even more... You, like advanced than that you need to find a cure for people losing their minds and becoming feral as, as ghouls obviously 
a condition that would be insanely hard to track and figure out what the cause is and how to reverse it. Like, God, I, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> also, keep in mind, if shit like this exists in the world, how did somebody like father die of cancer? <laughs> hey, sir, my name is Lucy McLean. My dad's been taken and I, I, I've been kidnapped. He, he's, he's right outside. I say you've lost a finger. Ah, that won't do at all. Let's get you taken care of. Follow me. How the fuck is he going to fix the finger? I am very worried right now. He's not. Yeah. We saw this in the trailer. This but I'm curious if she's actually going to get her finger back or not, or if it's literally just, it's gone forever. Yeah, that's something I meant to mention earlier. I am actually shocked that they cut her finger off, and if it's gone forever, then, like, wow. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I surprised. don't think they will. I don't I don't think they have the, the fucking stones to do that. I think she will get it back in some bullshit way. Especially, I'm just curious what it's going to be. Especially since it's in her right hand, so that's her finger, uh, trigger finger. Exactly. Yeah, and it was his uh, trigger finger as well. Like, again, why he stuck it in her mouth, I don't know. Maybe they'll just dump a bottle of liquid on it and put it there and it'll just attach again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to go Resident Evil Village again. Second uh, time we got the reference that. Apologies for the mess. Time flies by lately. Especially since my temporal sensors went out in the Great War. That must have been a week ago at least. Would you mind taking a seat on that gurney in front of you? Now, what have we here? Okay, I didn't mind that joke. That was like the one joke I feel like actually kind of landed. Come on. Yeah, this is fucking bullshit. He's just gonna take a random finger, stick it on, and... They, they actually it? made a joke about this in the movie Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. Where... His finger, his fingers get cut off. Right. Yes, I remember that yeah, now. He's in the hospital bed and he's like, yeah, they even put my fingers back. So does that one look weird to you? Because he's got the girl's finger on with her fingernail and everything included. Right, because one of her fingers got cut off too. Yep. <laughs> but like, come on. They're sitting in a drawer. They're going to fucking rot within hours. Like, obviously not yeah. right away, but they won't be good after like an hour or two. Yeah, in, like fucking desert heat. Yeah, like this 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 thing isn't like a refrigerated thing or anything. This isn't like those crazy incidents where hey, something gets cut off, you stick it in ice and take it to the fucking hospital, and then they can reattach it and it'll be fine. Yeah, this is yeah, a, quite a fuck? severe difference. Jesus Christ, they, they can't get anything right in this show. Yeah. <laughs> and again, it's another one of those instances of. They actually had something sort of good there, and then they fuck it up immediately. Like, as soon as that scene's done, it's like, oh, well, who fucking cares now? Because yeah, I cause... actually like that joke of the fucking, well, that must have been at least a week ago. <laughs> and it's like, okay, that's actually kind of funny. And then, and then it's immediately followed by this dumb shit. Like, what the fuck? This is one of the best examples of how unserious Fallout is now, thanks to Bethesda. Yep. It's a complete joke. Yeah. With it, ah, this one will do it. Now you're lucky I don't have to use a thumb. Our finger infantry is in a sorry state. Now, if you give me your hand. Okay, you're going to feel a slight pinch. What the? I'm sorry. It's literally what? rotting at the end. Yeah. It. This literally can't work. It's gonna. Yeah. The the finger is dead. Like. Dead, dead. That's that's dead, rotting flesh. She's actually gonna get sepsis from this. Oh, good. Maybe she'll fucking die off before the end of the season. I swear to also, God, if they reattach this and it just suddenly fucking works like a like a normal finger. I, oh, no. yeah. This is go. It's a rotten finger. Not it's actually problem. bending. She actually. Oh my, oh my God. God. That doesn't make any sense. That's not how that works. Yeah, oh my good lord. 
granted, you know, she's also a character that's like, she's the annoying kind of character where she's woefully unprepared for everything, but everything just kind of goes her way in a weird roundabout way. I don't even mm -hmm. mind that if it makes sense. If he had literally a fridge, a freezer full of fingers, and they yeah. weren't fucking disgusting, discolored, rotted looking, okay, yeah. fine, whatever. I can give it a pass, I guess. But to literally I open a drawer and pull out, like, one of the nastiest looking, clearly decaying fingers in there and just put it on her and no oh, it's fine look at that spending now you know and it's weird yeah. that they didn't because they but there's the whole robo brain thing and like you know the uh the think tank like they can clearly preserve organs and body parts and tanks and stuff so yep. why not have like a tank full of fingers that are like twitching and shit and just pull one out and reattach it like we it's literally in the games in fact yeah. and it would probably be they, better for the Bethesda humor thing to have a tank of fingers that are twitching and like have them so they're not all just piled at the bottom but they're like floating mid water or whatever that juice is and it, like have it portrayed as like it's a fucking fish tank yeah I I'm imagining like you know one of those like little cylindrical uh like tanks with a bunch of fingers in it and bubbles rising up yeah. And they're just kind of, it's like a lava lamp sort of thing where like they're just like floating around up and down and they're twitching. Yeah. And he's just like pulls one out and reattaches it. It's like the technology is in the games for this. We, the Robo Brains exist. The Think Tank exists. We know that, that, that this can be done. And it would still Why be. Why don't you reference? And it would still be a silly Bethesda humor moment. So you wouldn't even lose that aspect of it if it's really that important. Yeah. It would still be goofy as shit, but it's like at least it's referring to the games in some yeah. way, but it's not even that it's literally, Oh, we're going to take some rotten fingers out of a drawer and reattach it. And it's just going to work somehow. That feels really, really nice. Oh my God. It, it, it straight up just works immediately too. It's not even one of those things where it's like, Oh, well over time, it, it, some fucky wookie shit happens and it, it regains. It's a bit, no, it's literally rotten right now. And she's able to move it. Like it's a perfectly not, normal, healthy finger. Not just she's able to move it. Oh, that feels nice. Yeah. Yeah. What the fuck? They nailed it. They nailed it. Yeah, they nailed it. <laughs> they nailed it. I, I thought I was here to be a sex slave. What? No. What a disgusting idea. <laughs> I'm simply going to harvest your organs. Huh? Then why give her a finger? Yeah, what? Why? Like, why give her a finger when you could just take all of hers? Because quirky Fallout robot. Like, that's so fucking stupid. Like, especially if like if you're gonna harvest her organs, that's gonna kill her anyway. So yes. just take everything. She's gonna be very dead, very, very dead. Not soon enough. Oh my god! What if they turn her into a robo brain thing? <laughs> oh no, she becomes one of those awful Fallout, uh, Bethesda Fallout robots, the Ada models or whatever. Oh, oh no. the, the Sultron? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, Ada's uh, the companion you build in uh, Automatron. Yeah. Yep. So, God, it was so weird to see one of those show up and, like, just it's in there in the desert sands. Like, why are you here? Go away. <laughs> I still find it funny that one of the things that she has like the most reaction to in the show is a tumbleweed, but seeing yeah. a robo or seeing a fucking assaultron in the sand, no reaction to it. In fact, everything after that, up until the the axolotl, she has like no reaction to. Yeah. What are you looking at? A murderer in a cage? Paying the price for what you did to us. For what you did to the innocent people in Vault 32. I don't know what the people of Vault 32 were up to. But it was anything but innocent. What? Oh my god, are we really gonna do the fucking... 
We we need our evil well, vault tech intrigue. Yeah. Oh, they were they were experimenting on humans and they were they growing were crops from human babies. <laughs> they were experimenting on the other two vaults they were connected to. That was the that was the vault tech evilness. Oh, they were actually feeding you guys different hormones and growth serum. It's There's, why you're know. a manlet. <laughs> yeah, it's, why, it's why you look like you uh, you're straight from the game cuck simulator <laughs> one of the scientists in vault 32 had a strange obsession with incest he was performing <laughs> an experiment in your vault <laughs> Still now. this won't hurt a bit what bullshit is gonna save her? Yeah, she's fucking here. Like, Excuse me. really? What? Really? There's no fudge here. What? How does that still have power? That's why I put a Braxo draining fluid in his syringes. Snip, snip. Tell them what a Braxo does to the human body. If you've got a clog that's full of muck, trust a Braxo draining fluid to, to get it unstuck. It's very, very poisonous. Okay. You can walk out of here. Not just me. Them too. They just all started immediately killing each other. <laughs> yeah, they, they all go feral. <laughs> hey, thank you! How the fuck are you a ghoul? Wait, what? Was that, was that Mr. Bestiality? No. Lady, those, those ones you don't understand. No, I'm sorry, you don't do that. You don't look even if she's threatening you with that, you you tell her they're feral, they will kill us all. There's no distinction. Yeah. 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 Why, why, why I hate that. I hate that in fucking any piece of media where all they have to do is simply say why they can't do it, you know, just blurt it out. And they just don't. They're just like, well, I, I guess I'll do what you say and get us all killed. It, it, yeah. Just fucking go, they will kill us all. Yeah. They're feral. Don't be scared. You're free. Oh. You fucking idiot. Oh gosh. Yeah, you're a dumb bitch. Yeah, you're fucking stupid. Hello there. Goodbye. Okay. I'm not gonna lie, I actually that that was the thing that we got a chuckle out of me. The, the fucking feral there? jumping yeah, the feral jumping on the Mr. Hand and he's like, hello there. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind that. I just don't know why a Fira would attack a uh, a robot that's already I, on the yeah, ground. I, yeah, I don't get it. But again, like the stupidity of the situation aside, that <laughs> actually at least got a chuckle out of me. The hello yeah. there, and then he jumps off because he sees an actual meaty target, and he's like, "Goodbye." Yeah, yeah, that's fair. I like that. <laughs> it's funny that the robot had two good jokes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's more than everyone else in the entire show. You are super lucky there is only three. Yes. Yeah. Well, technically there might be a fourth one, but that lady's resisting it. Martha. My name is Martha. That's right. Your name is Martha.
Give her the oh, juice. So, so, so oh, okay, so here's the other question I have. So, Mr. Handy was working for these two geniuses. They can make the ghoul serum, apparently? Somehow? Like, best, now? What the fuck? No, best case... Uh, I keep going best case. Um, best faith interpretation would be they have him harvest organs, they trade the organs to someone else for the ghoul juice, and they give the ghoul juice to ghouls to bring in more people to harvest organs from. Okay, fair. Uh, I'll, I'll, yeah, that, you know, that does sound reasonable. Yeah, it makes sense, which means they probably won't do that. <laughs> I mean, who knows? Maybe this was like the ghoul, anti-ghoul serum manufacturing hub or something. I don't know. But for now, um, yeah, we'll go with uh, steel manning the shit out of it, and it's they're trading the organs for the juice. I want to know how the juice is made. Yeah. And I want to know why they have ghouls kept hostage like that, too. It's really fucking weird. Yeah, like, what's the point? Yeah. I, 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 I hope guess they could it. still... I guess they could still harvest the organs... Of feral ghouls, it's just odd. <laughs> the robot has been the most entertaining, entertaining part of the show, and I'm so desperate for like anything even close to that that I'm just like, please fix up the robot and bring it with you. I want the yes. robot to be just the main make character. him a part of the fucking cast. <laughs> no, don't make him part of the cast. Get rid of the cast and just replace them all with him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like he gets. He gets some weird bug in his programming, and now he's going off on an adventure to find Robco or something. I don't know. He's off to find his manufacturer. It's another fucking family member quest. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> he's like, I am currently experiencing a malfunction. I must return to my manufacturer. <laughs> and he just has, like, weird little adventures all throughout the wasteland. And he gets sidetracked on uh, side quests. Yeah. I know there's someone in there. Talk to me. Shoot the bitch. Did the force of the bullet actually like lift her up and throw her in the opposite direction? I'm I don't sorry. Know. Bullets don't do that. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's impossible. Yeah, that's that that's fucked. Not even a shotgun also, could do that. Did she hit her in the head perfectly? I mean, we I know that she was actually a really good shot because they established that as part of her establishing character montage thing. It looked like a uh, body shot. I can play it again. Cause yeah, if so, then then ghouls absolutely aren't like resistant to damage. Yeah, she yeah. one shot this one, so why? Either it better be a headshot, or if it wasn't, she better still be alive. Yeah. yeah. There's a chance here to do like a really sad moment where it wasn't a kill shot, but it injured her horribly. And she's got her mind back for the moment, and she realizes she's dying. Ooh, yeah. That would be interesting. You can do this, Fallout show. I. No, I don't believe in you, but I hope. <laughs> I hope you can pull off, like, a genuine tragic moment here and be serious. You know if they do it, they're going to immediately follow it up with, like, the dumbest thing ever. Yeah, they're going to do, like, a fart joke after it or something. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be, like, this really sad moment where she does, like, I don't know, she, like, strokes her head or something right before it and then blows her brains out. It's this really sad moment, and then she just evacuates her bowels or some shit. <laughs> Yeah, oh. and then it lingers on it, and just Lucy like realizes she, the expression on her face changes to one of disgust, and she's just like, "Ew." Yeah, yeah. Please don't fuck it up, Fallout show. Watch out! Yeah, yes. it throws her. It's... Yeah, it throws her, and it looked like that came from her midsection. Yeah, yeah. that looked like a body shot. It's hard to tell, but that absolutely does not look like a headshot. Well, let's mm. see where it goes. Pardon me, ma'am. Could I help you have a 
have a better day. No, thank you. Fix him! He's the best character. Fix him! <laughs> okay, that's another amusing thing I saw. <laughs> he wa he waits to look at her. Can I have you can I help you have a better day? She's like, no, and then he finally was like, oh, and he turns on the little windshield wipers on his fucking eyes, like, eh. I didn't eh. notice that. Yeah, he does. Look. <laughs> squeak, squeak, squeak. I don't like that they didn't show. Yeah. Because now we we don't really know if it was a headshot or not. I'm pretty sure it was a body shot. But... It looks like a body shot. Which then completely negates him like just taking rounds like nothing's like there's no problem. Yeah, Which again, three shots to the back with a rifle, and he's totally fine. This this girl gets shot once in the chest with a fucking pistol, and she dies. Like, what oh, the yeah. fuck? Mm. Man, it, this could be another one of those where Hollywood doesn't understand fucking calibers. And they think it, because it's a 10 millimeter, oh, it's way more powerful than a 9. A 9 will blow your lung clean out of your body. I heard <laughs> the president say that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I was genuinely hoping they would uh, do pretty much what we described there, aside from the ruining it part. Because you, you could have, you can make a genuine, really sad moment there that would have, like, you could have lingered on it, you know? Like, the old ghoul lady is dying, Lucy feels bad because this person who lost her mind, like, they're right next to a crate of the fucking ghoul juice. If she lasted just a little bit longer... She could have been, maybe not saved, but, like, brought her back for the time being until she needs more ghoul juice. But because Hell, it didn't happen, it's like, Lucy has to put her out of her misery, and you do the, like, slow camera pull back of Lucy just, like, fucking breaking down from having to deal with that. Mm -hmm. Hell, they could have done, uh, like, a little bit of a callback to the uh, the one that they shot earlier, where she does, like, the same thing that he did, where... You know, like they, she brings up some like happy memory, and then as she's like reminiscing about some happy moment, and she's actually genuinely happy, she shoots her. Yeah. You know, and it's like, oh, yeah, you're starting to understand why he did it. Well, no, he did it because food. Well, yeah, I know he, they fucking ruined it because eh, I'm yeah. just hungry. <laughs> yeah, he wants fucking... a juicy ass meat. <sighs> if I'm being like super generous to the show, which I don't think this is actually <laughs> what they're doing, but if I were to be super generous, I could say that that's not the actual reason why he shot them, like why he shot the guy. It's just he wanted to freak her out, so he started eating him after he was dead because he's a corpse, he's already dead. But the reason he actually shot them was to put him out of his misery because... He genuinely felt bad for him. But again, that's being super generous, and I'm not even... Yeah, because it doesn't like... <laughs> come across that way when he starts, like, stripping him down. Yeah. Yeah. Because you could have even had a line from the ghoul being like, it's better to go out this way. And then when he starts stripping him down for food and whatever, he's like, hey, it's the wasteland, you gotta survive. Yeah, you can't waste anything. Yeah. And those two lines would have fixed that scene for me, for the most part, if they removed the stupid jokey stuff from it. Yeah. Yeah, hell. Hell yeah, if he would have, and if she would have, like, said, like, there, there's, like, a limit, he could have just pointed outside and he's like, it's a fucking desert out there, hun. Yeah, Where have you seen any food? Different? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, or... Even have him say, well, you're welcome to go outside and forage for berries, or something like that, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, or, Good hell, luck. they could have even tied it in. It, w it was stupid what Maximus did, but they even could have tied it in as like, oh, I think I saw an apple tree outside. Why don't you go climb it and get us one? Mm -hmm. With the obvious implication of it's, it is a fucking desert, and we've seen what the outside looks like. Yeah. Yeah. God, it's so annoying because it's so easy to fix this shit. <laughs> it, just even a mildly competent writer can fix this shit. <laughs> but no, the people who wrote this were paid to do it. And they think that they're not getting paid enough. 
<laughs> I think I think that was my favorite recurring joke from I can't remember whose video it was. But mm, it was the uh, the guy who did the um, the boys. Yo, yes, the mm-hmm. yeah, dude, that one was so good. And these people think they're not being paid enough. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think they're already being overpaid. Yeah, <laughs> like, I might put a few lines like that into my video enough? on this show. <laughs> God, it's so fucking true, though. Yep. Like, eh, look at this shit. Look how bad it is, and look how easy it is to fix, too. It's like, even just a moment of thought, and it's like, oh, yeah, you could easily fix these issues. And they didn't. And these people are paid to do this shit. And they Mm -hmm. think they're not getting paid enough. Yeah. We might not actually get any Maximus in this episode, making it the best episode so far. I don't know. I'm a little bit more interested in what Maximus is doing than either of these other two storylines because <laughs> I actually kind of like the dynamic between him and uh, Thaddeus. Yeah, Thaddeus. I actually want to see where that goes. After he stops tormenting him, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. if he stops fucking being a dickhead to him all the time. Yeah. Well, that's why I kind of like um, it, that's why I kind of like the whole them celebrating at the end thing. Yeah. Yeah. It was just so weird that the writers were like, hey, we're going to have Maximus do exactly what Titus did. Oh, he's getting his revenge. It's like, but you comically made Titus a villain. Like, you made him comically stupidly evil so that the audience would feel, like, bad that Maximus was being a dickhead and letting somebody die in front Mm -hmm. of him. You know, I actually thought about it, and I thought it actually would be. It, it would be a goofy moment, but it would actually be kind of funny if, like, instead of Thaddeus, you know, and, like, you know, uh, Titan or whatever his name is, uh, being a complete evil piece of shit, Maximus is actually still his squire, and he's, like, this, like, really hard-ass fucking very stoic, quiet guy who, uh, you know, he, he he doesn't laugh or anything. Like, he doesn't show any kind of, like, happy emotion. He's just very serious, always, you know, always on the mission sort of mindset. And that moment happens, but instead of Thaddeus, it's Maximus. And at the end, he actually does do the, yeah! <laughs> it's like, that would actually be kind of funny to see him break character just to go, yeah! <laughs> like, when oh. they're both celebrating, that would actually be kind of like a character-building moment to show yeah, like absolutely. that they're actually starting to bond. And it's like, that would have actually been kind of funny and like yeah. gen- like kind of heartwarming. But no, we got this shit instead. It would have also been more interesting if Titus had been the, like, I'm going to explain to you why I do the things I do and why I want you to go in that cave and not me sort of thing, right? Mm-hmm. It also like, would have been nice if they made Titus a character. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, he, he could have easily explained it like, like, all right, I need you to go in there, even for just a moment. And if you see anything, I need you to run out here as fast as you can and dive to the ground. Because I'm going to let loose a hail of fucking bullets if I see you running out of that fucking cave. Yeah. Now, the, I need, the reason I need you to go in that cave is because these suits are filtered. I can't smell shit, and I'm not taking off my fucking armor to risk of something coming up behind me. So I'm going to have you go in, and I need you to describe what you're smelling in there. If it smells like a damp, moldy cave, we're probably good. If you smell any kind of feces or blood, we're in trouble. Basically, yeah. go in there to try to sniff out, is is there a fucking radiation bear in there right now or not? Yeah. something just anything to like kind of justify it in some way they don't even try to justify it it's literally just he's an evil piece of shit who wants to kill his squire because oh, i don't like him for no yeah. reason yeah not, and not even not not like him it just goes oh i'm so fucking bored put us down now nah. yeah yeah which is so it. weird that he's like i want to kill something and then the moment there's something for him to kill he pussies out and runs away it's like yeah. What the fuck? It's so weird too because we're shown what the suit can do. He should have been able to have punched it to death fairly easily. 
given how strong the suits are in this show, it's insane how overpowered they are now. But also, apparently he just had this fucking like overpowered gun attached to the suit that Maximus uses later. It's like, well, where'd he get that? Why didn't he pull that out and shoot the bear with that? What, what the fuck? Why did he turn into a massive pussy and run away? safe to say they went bananas. This still doesn't explain how the raiders got in. I'm glad that's thank a concern. You. Yes, thank you for actually acknowledging a weird fucking plot point. Death to management? What? These people were crazy. Yeah, what? If there were any survivors down here, they probably opened the door and welcomed the raiders right in. They might have. Maybe. Best faith, uh, yeah, best faith interpretation or assumption, I guess, would be the survivors left and they left the door open. Yeah. Or, hell, but, it, it could even be fine with what he said where, because the, again, they, they seem batshit fucking crazy from the yeah. The storytelling skeletons all over the place. They're not they, quite they skeletons seem... yet. <laughs> They're getting there. They're still a bit uh, but of they seem like on those uh, they seem like they've gone nutty. So I it wouldn't surprise me if they did like open the doors and just like, hey, come on in sort of thing. Maybe. Okay, now I have to do a worse faith interpretation <laughs> because <laughs> it's this show and they fuck up everything. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if the reveal is like, oh, the Raiders pumped crazy gas into the vault and drove everyone crazy and then hacked the intercoms to say that if they open the door, they'll they'll get better. And I they mean, did it. I mean, see, in a different show, that could be interesting. Like, ha, huh, we're in our impregnable bunker and stuff like that. And then, like, as people are trying to figure out how to get to the door, one of them, ha you know, is looking at it and he's nodding. And then he goes off and takes like a, a bit of like gasoline and he, you see him grab a couple cloths and everyone's like, what are you doing? And he's like, ah, bunker this big needs ventilation. Where do you think they're getting all that air from? And I was like, yeah, you could do that in, in a setting, you know, in a thing like this. But it's, it's a vault. They're a contained unit. That's the whole point behind the vaults. They don't have external ventilation going inside. They have like recycling facilities inside the vault. Yeah. Yeah. They just dug a really deep hole, okay? It was open from the outside. No. What? What? They need a pit boy to open the door. They had one. Who's? The mom's. What? 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 And also, all pit boys just have that? Like, why would the overseer's wife have that level of access to open up a different vault's door? Yeah. From the outside? It's kind of established in Fallout 4, and I really fucking hate this, that the pit boys can apparently just open vault doors regardless of, like, where they're from, because the one vault that's still active in uh, the Commonwealth, you can open with your pit boy, and they're like... <sighs> Wow, that's right, really fucking weird, isn't it? Whereas yeah, it, like, I forgot about that. Even Fallout 3 handled this better, where it's like, no, we changed the door codes. Fuck off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because why? That's a huge security liability. Holy shit. Yeah, I don't know why you would ever program that, especially Vault Tech. It'd be like, yeah, what if, what if there's a vault that discovers that, like, what the vaults are, that they're these experiments, they manage to survive and escape, and then they decide, oh, well, we're gonna go open all the vaults and rescue everyone. Yeah, it, It's not that hard, apparently. You just open up the fucking vault with your goddamn pit boy, and then just yeah. tell everyone in the vault that, yeah, these are evil experiments. We barely survived. Kill him. Do it. Yes, him absolutely. Head. Absolutely kill him right now. You turn into one of those? How it works? Uh, 
Shoot him. Shoot him! I like how her pauldron is completely off of her shoulder and just <laughs> sitting on her, like, right above her boob. Yeah, like, she's not even wearing the fucking armor, right? Yeah, like, what the fuck? They couldn't have, like, properly fit it for her. Like, they didn't do proper measurements or have the belt, like, a, like have the pauldron a little bit further back on the belt. Like, come on. like you I'll never be like you oh fuck off I'll never be like you so I'm gonna save your life fuck off should have fucking killed him golden rule motherfucker what he actively trying to get you killed he cut your fucking finger off what like, the fuck? Yeah, this and now she's got a fucking rotted finger that works for, you know, yeah. fucking lunacy magic. Mm. Oh, God, I hate this. I hate it so much. Like, how do you know he's not just going to drink these and immediately come back for you and kill you? And considering the fact that he's basically immortal when he's like, you know, in top shape. Like, there's no hope of you defeating him in combat. He'll just fucking kill you. So why even risk giving him anything? This is going to be the moment that changes him because his cold black heart was uh, warmed well, yeah, up of course. by the That's... kindness of the stranger. And he remembers what people were like before the war, before he lost his dumb oh. child. And he's going to be Yeah, even worse. Now. Yeah, it's his child will have said something like, Daddy, we have to stick together. We can't lose the one thing that makes us human or some bullshit. Yeah, and he'll like be some flashback to like that. that. I hope the flashback involving her is just her horribly irradiated corpse and him crying over it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's obviously what they're going to do. I'm just pissed off that she's doing this. <laughs> When it's so obvious that it's like, not only should you not do it simply because of how he treated you, but also because it's a a huge liability for your life. Like yep, there was, yeah. <laughs> He tried to kill you. He, he took enjoyment in torturing you. He made you drink irradiated water and cut your finger off, then sold you to a fucking an organ harvester. And was dumping and you he, in irradiated water to lure in the gulper. Uh, the yeah, gulper. almost let you get eaten. Killed a bunch of people in the town, including the fucking guy, like the one person you considered a friend. Mm -hmm. And it's like, why would you not assume that the moment he's healthy again, he's just going to come back after you and kill you? You know what? It's, it's literally that meme of... Uh... Uh, with uh, Hitler, where it's like, oh yeah, we could uh, get through to him. It's like, no, we have to kill him. Damn. <laughs> I, I think we have to kill this guy. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's just doing all the drugs now? <sighs> why, whoa. Why are you treating that so nonchalantly? Like, why are you... Like, what if you lose a few of those bottles and they and they crack on the ground? That stuff you supply you don't have. This stuff is very fucking important to you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It feels what? like he's wasting them at this point. Yeah, and and he's leaving a ton behind because he there's no way you could fit all of the stuff that was in the box in your hat. Yeah. Yeah. He's just leaving a ton of it behind. Just take the fucking box. Don't you dare put that hat on. I swear to God, if he puts the hat on, that is. The dumbest <laughs> shit ever. <laughs> if it smashes them because he's not paying attention, like, oh. It'd be like the highlight is like, oh, God, you really are an idiot. Oh, I thought there was something on the TV, which is why he was looking at it. Yeah! You, you fucking idiot! God, I hate this character so much. Oh, my God. He's going to have a memory back to the... Thing like, do I have to kill him? I mean, my character is all about justice. I hope it is. Oh my that. god, it I, literally is. It's gonna be the fucking. I don't kill people. Cause I don't I, shoot people. 
I do remember this from the trailer where he's watching his own stuff on the TV. I, I hope it's not calling back to that exact scene. Oh my god, it's gonna be something like that. It he's has gonna fucking... to be. They set it up. Yeah, he's gonna watch it and he's gonna be like, he's gonna say like, oh, whatever his character name was, I don't remember. Like, never kills. Yeah. And then he's gonna fucking become his old character because oh, she, she gave me medicine that I'm wasting now. Wow! That's what they changed it to? Yeah, what the fuck? This doesn't even make sense. This is an old western. <laughs> Why would they wouldn't say Kami? Yeah. <sighs> wow. God, what a shit character. I fucking hate him. But hey, we didn't get a we didn't get a, a thing of Maximus at all, so that elevates the episode at least a little bit. <laughs> Which is funny because I'm actually interested in seeing the fucking like relationship between those two. Yeah, I'm more interested with with Thaddeus. Like, if Maximus fucking died, I'd be like, "Hooray, Thaddeus is free!" Yeah, honestly, yeah, <laughs> I it, agree. It, it would be funny for Maximus to die in the armor and Thaddeus to be like, "Shit, I have to get this back to the Brotherhood and pull it in." He's like, "Wait, what?" Yeah, <laughs> and he sees who it is. <laughs> Yeah. Also, I'm still really upset that the fucking that Lucy didn't fix up the robot. <laughs> yeah, best yeah. character gone. The one enjoyable part of the show gone. Wasted. Wasted. <sighs> I want to oh, see the God. end credits animation thing because that's been like the only good thing from the show that I've liked at all. Fair. Based on the video game series Fallout, yeah, that's a lie. Yeah, yeah it no. is absolutely not. Also, like, it could have been more honest. Said based on Bethesda's Fallout. Yeah, like it's like it's like, oh yeah, no, I think I'm pretty sure actual Fallout fans would agree because Bethesda's Fallout is not Fallout. And yet they even managed to fuck up Bethesda's lore. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ, they can't get anything right. Dude, that's still the funniest part is that Emil tried to fan fiction his character in and got roasted on it so hard. Yeah, he had the backtrack oh. pretty much immediately. Then he was crying on Twitter the following day. Yeah, yeah, what a fucking. This is why it's like. People, this is why we say Emil is a shit writer and doesn't know what he's doing and he doesn't care. It's because he can't be bothered to remember what he himself wrote. Or at the very least, if we steel man the shit out of it, maybe he didn't write that Nate was out of the military at that point. Maybe he just approved it. But still, the buck stops with him. Yeah. Mm hmm I just find it funny that not only was that just like a really stupid thing because he didn't realize that that makes him complicit in a war crime, but also the fucking dates don't even line up. It's not even <laughs> possible for Nate to Be have been <laughs> because he was yeah, out of the about. army before fucking twenty sixty six. Mm -hmm. And it, it wasn't even it wasn't even that he was out of the army for like a month or two. And so they could have literally just pushed his paperwork and be like, all right, no, we need you because, you know, we're, we're going to war with Canada. No, no, no. It wasn't even that. It was two years. Yeah. Years. Yeah, he was like. Discharged right from the fucking military at that point for not reenlisting yeah. or whatever. Yeah, he got he got a. Uh, um, they say honorable discharge, but I don't know how you would get an honorable discharge. It should be general discharge. Maybe mm. maybe honorable because maybe he had good service. I don't know. I need to, I need to refresh my things because there's actually a lot more discharges than people know. Cause most people just know of honorable and dishonorable discharge. But there's stuff like uh, general other than honorable, uh, medical, um, God, admin, separation. Uh, there's so there's a bunch of different types or categories, I should say, classification. So, should we talk about uh, the show quickly so far? Now that we're halfway through, 
the wonderful and amazing Fallout TV show. I am shocked that there are people that are like, this is really good. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, yeah, it's another one of those moments where you feel like you're in the twilight zone and be like, yeah, are you like, watching the same show? Are you it, sure? It feels like everyone else has mass psychosis because, uh, yeah. what I'm seeing here in this show is not lining up with the praises. It's, people constantly making stupid decisions or acting ridiculous or just dumb things happening at every level. Like, on the lowest level, the nitpicky, this doesn't affect anything in the world level. Oh yeah, let's put a poster up next to a blood smear and let's paint over the blood smear instead of just washing it off. But then at yeah. the higher levels, you have a Brotherhood of Steel Knight going off mission because he wants to shoot something randomly and then like turning into a massive pussy he can't fight a bear even though the power armor like five minutes later is shown to be able to throw a brick a mile away and kick a stone through a building causing the building to collapse power armor can now fly like iron man armor but also a knife cutting one of the tubes on the helmet is enough to almost completely disable it. And, like, the person inside is losing control of it. Granted, yeah. someone who hasn't worn power armor before, someone who's unfamiliar with it, I don't think a tube losing a bit of air should fuck him over that much. And... And this whole episode, for the most part, just felt like a fucking waste. Like, what happened? Oh, he sold her to Oregon Robot. She got free. The end. Yeah. Yeah, she didn't her even change as a character, really. Like, they tried to do the whole, like, dramatic, triumphant thing with, like, a different look and everything to show that she's she's more serious now. But she still has the same views. She hasn't changed as a character at all. Yeah. Like, we haven't actually done anything. And yeah, I, I don't get the praise. Like, even ignoring the, like, lore inaccuracies and stuff, there's just so many problems. Just, if you just look at it as, like, its own standalone thing, it still doesn't work. There's just so many problems and dumb decisions and just weird choices that, went into making this show and it's just like I, I don't get it and then you got people saying that it's faithful to the games on top of that and it's like it's not good as its own thing if you take any of the lore of the actual games into account it's a million times worse but there but there's people praising it it's like oh yeah it's so faithful to the games it's not even faithful to bethesda's lore like yeah. what do you mean it's yeah, just, just bad all around. Yeah. Um, I was just thinking about that fight in episode 3 between Maximus and the guy sh fucking with his power armor, where he went into town to get a, par uh, a part repaired, and he didn't take his gun with him. The, the gun he had in episode 2. And yeah. he comes back, he gets into a fight with these guys, he gets the shit beaten out of him, and he grabs a pair of, like, long metal tongs and for his side weapon, his secondary weapon his offhand weapon he of all the things he could grab, he grabs a fucking toilet seat yeah, like what the hell also what happened to that really overpowered sidearm he had that's what, uh, that's what Kree's talking about, yeah he doesn't have that that's gun that's the anymore. gun he had cause so he had his uh, pistol in episode two, his, um, yeah, his pistol, that yeah. he killed the Yagoi with. That's the only time we see it. And yeah. he, he somehow loses that. He doesn't take uh, Titus's assault rifle. He doesn't take the rucksack full of supplies. He just runs off in his power armor. But he's got this other gun strapped to the uh, power armor that's neither of those guns. He fires it at the ghoul like two or three times in episode two, and then he fumbles it, the shot goes off to the side and something fucking explodes somehow, and then it's just gone forever. Yeah. 
Like, what the fuck? And keep in mind, a lot of people have been saying, you know, the show is great through and through. A lot of people have been saying the first four episodes are the good ones, and it goes downhill after that. And they mean that as genuine yeah. praise, not like, oh yeah, they're less bad than the others. No, there are people who say the four episodes we just watched were actually really, really good, and the show falls off a fucking cliff in episode five. But I've also heard the sentiment <laughs> that most of the show is really good, except for the last two episodes. So what the fuck are we yeah. in for, for episode five and seven? Yeah, like this is already yeah. bottom of the barrel. Like I would struggle to give the show up to this point, even a two. Like I, I would really have to stretch to give this show a two out of ten. Yeah, because it is has, so bad. One thing it has going for it is the the props, the prop work. They obviously put a lot of effort into that, but that's all superficial fucking nonsense. Mm-hmm. 